Okay, a lot has been said uh, this morning. I prepared a presentation uh, not knowing that all the speakers before me were uh, addressing the issues. I, I made some small ones, so I'm, I'm going to read them. Um, the psychology, an incentive by taxes, balancing capacity, grid restraints, local solutions, contracts, cooperation, the logistics chain, and flexibility. Okay, now this is the project you hire us. Um, can I start my presentation? Okay, the question I have 
gegen uns vorstellen werden. A concrete balancing capacity. The e-harvest project looks for balancing capacity. It can be a concrete building just by raising the temperature by a few degrees when it's windy and just cooling it down when the wind is dropping. You have this excess energy stored in your building. There's a flat balancing capacity. It's all over the place in the Netherlands. Imagine you are able to pump the polis a bit before it's actually needed, before it starts raining. Or maybe you can wait a bit longer if it's still raining, but you know the prediction is it's going to stop raining. And the level can be raised a bit, a few centimeters, no problem. We start pumping at off-peak hours. Huge battery in the Netherlands. Now, this is the focus of the harvest, and this is the adventure. Hidden balancing capacity. Can you make a drawing of a hidden balancing capacity, please? Anybody? It's there. Huge industries. They run their processes 24-7, but they can switch on and off. And they can help balancing the grid. Let's have a look. You can run your paper industry, producing a lot more when the energy is cheap, when it's available. You store it in your warehouse, and when the time is there, you can sell it to your clients. Detailed hidden capacity. A floating balancing capacity. In Scotland, there is a uh, smart guy who says, I'm going to balance your grid. And I'm going to use a hybrid ferry, and you plug it in, and when it's windy, at night, you can put your excess energy in my boat, in my battery, and it's for free. Actually, it's not for free. He gets to pay to balance the grid. So his boat is extra large, extra luxury, because it's been paid by the excess energy. He earns money by balancing the grid. Now, this is when I come to another electric vehicle uh, topic for today, the dispersed balancing capacity. You can make a drawing, but you already know what I'm going to show you, loads of cars. I think this is a fossil car, because I couldn't get a picture of these amounts of electric vehicles yet. But this is the quality of the electric vehicle that I would like to address. The presumption is electric mobility plays a crucial role in balancing the grid and thus in the transition towards a more green and renewable energy. The green battery. Okay, this was the creative phase of the project. Now we have a problem. We said we're going to prove there is a business case. But there are a lot of obstacles, technical, organizational, legal, economical. That's what we already heard in the presentations before. So we're going to test it. We'll just do it. We're Nike. <coughs> we have a local project in the municipality of Zaanstad, and we call it Reloaded Renewable Energy Load Charge IT. And it combines a lot of actors, a lot of ingredients. We predict the travels by electric car, the kilometers. We have a weather prediction with the BBC weather connected to our grid. We have the renewable energy production, the actual production of the energy. We know what we pay for our energy, but we also know what is the actual value of the energy at this time. Can I make another decision if I know my contract price is different from the market price at the same time? What do I do? Do I charge or not? Okay. Some results. This is what it looks like. This is the psychological part, Martin. This is where we facilitate someone who has to take care of the car fleet of the municipality. There's lots of cars, and you can see they are somewhere hidden in a parking garage at minus three. Not the temperature, but the level. Um, and he needs to know, is it charging or not? Who is driving the car? Actually, um, 
what are the kilometers? Is it able to, to meet the demands of someone who likes to drive? This is the energy pattern. The cars are all connected to our smart grid, in fact, a computer, who's tracking all these data and he's making nice pictures of it. And here is the, the daily or the hourly uh, energy consumption. If you like to know, you can have a closer look at the website. This is the energy production anticipated, and it's the actual energy production. The darker line is the energy production. So somebody uh, must have mistaken at 12, there was less sun than we expected. The point is, what do you do with all this information? You can make new decisions. We charge our cars with energy coming from our own roof. So it's a very local solution. We charge with the PV system on the roof of the municipality buildings. But the cars are not always there. And the price is not always the best price. Maybe if I don't need the car, I can sell it. I can sell my energy. But maybe the prices are very low and I don't need the car to drive. I say, oh, for money's sake, I'm going to put the energy that's very cheap because it's available in abundance. I put it in my car. In that case, the battery is balancing the grid. There's an asset for the electric vehicle. It could add to the business case from various angles, car fleet owners, lease companies. They should think about the quality, the added value of the capacity, the battery capacity. You can sell it, you can store it, or you just need your energy and you're going to buy some. Okay, this happens. But this is a very nice overview, and you can see at the, at the bottom, it's about heroes. That's not a lot of money. But the car is one car, maybe two. The system is a trial, it's a pilot. And we run the pilot with one or two cars. But imagine if you're able to, to enlarge your car fleet and get everybody in the metropolitan area of Amsterdam connected. We'll talk about two and a half million inhabitants in the larger Amsterdam area. I think maybe over a million cars, that would really add some money in the system. This is the results of half a day, one euro. Half a day, one million, one million cars, I would say, a lot of money involved. But the problem is how to get there, because it's nobody's business yet. The results. The presumption was electric mobility plays a role in balancing the grid. This is the result of a few months storing the energy from our own roof in our own cars. 75% we were able to put in the battery. Unfortunately, 43% was not available because it was night time and we needed to charge because the car was on its way during daytime, so it couldn't be charged. 43%. These figures are summer figures. So good weather and holiday season. So the cars were there for a long time, charging. This is the figure for a year. Now I'm going to take some more time to explain what is actually here. You can see it's a bit improvised uh, graphics, but it's uh, quite recent from this week. The results are, can I have your votes please? The regular PV going in my car, from my roof in my car, without doing anything, like a stupid charger, is 36%. If I'm able to switch to, 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 to uh, to move my charging pattern to the production pattern, I'm able to add 10%. So now we can go back to the question and the answers and see what you... 
if the technique, yeah. Well, I think you are all, yeah, it's, it's okay. 10% is okay, and 30% is okay. I'm a bit worried about a 30% who doesn't know. So I'm going back to the, uh, to the presentation, but keep in mind 10 and 30%. Let's see, this was a trick question. Because 10% extra is one third of 36, roughly. So that's 30% and 10% of the whole 100. So it depends on the way you look at the question. <laughs> okay, now this is the paradigm. In what, what angle are you looking from at the, at, the, at the problem, the question? Are you looking from the PV problem, uh, the PV side, or the EV side? Okay, the regular PV goes for 36% directly into my battery. And if I'm able to smarten up without hampering my vital process, driving the car as I like to drive it, I can add 10% extra. Now this may sound a bit, yeah, well, no, wow. But um, it's a lot of money involved because it says something about the possibilities of adding renewables in your system. So your car gets really green by adding your own energy in it. Let's have a look at those percentages on the top of the presentation. The costs related to it. If I'm going to feed in, just don't do anything, 11%. If I'm anxious to know what are my benefits when I respond to day-night tariff and the availability of my own system, I'm able to reduce my costs by 25%. And even when I'm operating the APX, I'm able to respond to the online energy price at instantly, I'm able to, redu to reduce another 30% to my energy bill. Now this is, I think, quite impressive. It's just one car. But imagine the Scottish fleet. I can imagine he bought a huge luxury vessel, hybrid vessel, in the Scottish seas. Let's try and do this on land. Okay, now this is the basic question for you, uh, I think. How do I get myself organized with all these cars, with all these companies, with all the different stakeholders? This is quite a challenge. Let's say we need a smart grid. Let's start with the smart grid. Larger contracts, you need more cars, but a lot of processes. Can I? Well, I don't, I'm not going to read it. You can see, I need, I need to stretch your business case for electric vehicles with energy. You need to look at the energy component of your bill. Now, there are some problems in the Netherlands. I would like to address the Dutch situation. Um, we talked about taxes. Now, the taxes are a huge component in your energy bill. In the Netherlands, whoo, in the Netherlands, it's about 13 cents of 20 cents per kilowatt hour. So the majority, the larger part of your energy bill is not flexible. The actual price of energy is, let's say, 5 cents. So it's one-fourth of your total bill is energy. And it is varying in time. Now, if I'm able to respond to this flexibility, I will have a profit. But I need the tax to disappear. If the taxes don't move with the energy pattern or the price of energy, it's a no-go area. So who's going to decide what is the energy bill? The Ministry of Economic Affairs? Not. This is what I heard. There's another component. Being connected to the grid, you, get, you need to pay for this. This is a large component and it's not flexible. It's the energy, it's the network operator, Aliander, Tenet, Elia. They need their income to provide the energy uh, to get to the car. But the point is, you can help them balancing the grid. 
if the grid is not balanced, they need to invest in larger cables, more infrastructure. So by adding your flexibility to their grid, I think there would be an incentive to help them balancing the grid. It should be in your bill, in a way. It should be in your bill, but it's not. So, lots of stakeholders to be involved in the upcoming process. And um, if you'd like to know more about this, and I, I think it's good to have some questions from the audience, so I'll keep it up to here, but you can have some, um, some looks at our website. And um, I'm, I'm open to questions because I think this is more questions interesting. Questions for Jan yeah. Schroeder, please. But first, a warm welcome. Right, one, uh, one, thank you. Thank you.